Guys, congratulations. I find this project to be so interesting. Tell me a little bit about the process, and I know that the film took a little too long to make. It took 25 years, so when we suddenly got this call out of the right. blue from HBO, we were like, wow. It helps that Pete is on, I mean, I've never heard of it, but apparently it's on Big Show on HBO, and that all just sort of married well together. Peter's relationship with HBO, and obviously the success of Game of Thrones. Peter, what, what interested you about Hervé, and I read somewhere that you were terrified to play him. You don't want to do an imitation of someone, and or I'm one of those people who would rather just watch the documentary. That's good to say in promoting this movie. I'd rather watch the documentary. <laughs> <laughs> but there isn't a documentary. I want you to interview the most famous dwarf in the world. The man with the golden gun, Fantasy Island. The plan! The plan! Think you can handle that? No sweat. It's about a little person, a dwarf, and it's told in multiple time periods from the 50s in Paris to 70s LA to 90s London. I had never done that before, especially somebody in such recent history where there's footage of him and people are familiar with what he looked and sounded like. So that's sort of daunting, that idea, um, rather than creating a fictional character on your own. The core of the story is my real life interview with Hervé Villachez 25 years ago where I promised him in the final week of his life that I would tell his story. And Jamie, you had to play the part of Sasha. I'm sort of portraying like a version of Sasha, I guess, but trying to make it my own thing. I mean, he's got a different name, he's a different accent, but even saying that, I'm still definitely playing a version of him, and uh, we're still depicting a lot of things that really happened. The first time I met Hervé, he walked in, and he had this voice, and you know, and he had, he had this green Samsonite case filled with medication and knives and guns, and I mean, it was Because just, he was going through a lot of pain. He was in a lot of medical pain, his, his organs were shutting down. What made it worse was that Hervé was smoking, drinking, and you know, he was a famous kind of partier and womanizer at a certain point. He was also the kindest, most gentle, most funny, well-educated. He was a brilliantly talented painter, and he's expressing in his paintings the torment of being a little person, a dwarf, in the France of the 1950s, where he would get beaten up for just walking down the street. I haven't given an interview in 10 years. I have a real story for you, Junior. What's the takeaway, Peter, from this film? I think a sense of equality. It's a fight for justice, and oftentimes that can be misconstrued as something to do with one's own ego. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is, but equality is equality. What it must be like when you just want to fit in and you don't. And how painful that is. Somewhere, somehow, Hervé is out there. So thrilled that I'm sure that people are still talking about him. 